Hi, so let's start the next chapter, the spectral theorem. And this is the sixth week material, lecture number 13, uh, capsule 13A. The spectral theorem is one of the most important theorems in mathematics. And in fact, it's one of the most important theorems in all of science. So it is a star theorem in this course. So first, let us begin with the real case. In the last chapter, we saw diagonalizability and the importance of diagonalizability. Here, uh, a matrix is diagonalizable if there is a basis consisting of eigenvectors of A. Now here, we are going to look at real symmetric matrices. We are going to say that the matrix is symmetric matrix with real entries. If the matrix is symmetric and has real entries, we can do better. Not only can we find a basis of Rn consisting of eigenvectors, we can find an orthonormal basis of Rn consisting of eigenvectors. Here, of course, orthonormality, orthogonality and orthonormality are understood in terms of the usual inner product. Remember, if we have vectors w1, w2, wn, which are orthonormal in Rn, you string them together, the non-singular matrix that you're going to get is actually going to be an orthogonal matrix. What is an orthogonal matrix? A matrix O is said to be orthogonal if O transpose O equal to O, O transpose equal to identity. That's an orthogonal matrix. So the spectral theorem, the real version of the spectral theorem is that if A is a real symmetric N cross N matrix, then there is an orthonormal basis of Rn consisting of eigenvectors of A. In particular, real symmetric matrices are diagonalizable. But it's much better than that. Equivalently, there exists an orthogonal matrix O such that O transpose AO is diag lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n, where lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n are the eigenvalues of A and the eigenvalues are all real. What is this avatar of this theorem in the complex case? In the complex case, A is a n cross n matrix with complex entries, but I want the matrix to be a Hermitian matrix. Remember Hermitian matrix? A matrix A is said to be Hermitian if A equal to A star. What is A star? You take the transpose and you take the complex conjugate of each entry. So if A is a n cross n Hermitian matrix, then there is an orthonormal basis of Cn consisting of eigenvectors of A. Here, orthogonality and orthonormality is to be understood with respect to the usual Hermitian product in Cn. Equivalently, there exists a unitary matrix U such that U star AU is diag lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n. Lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n are the eigenvalues of A and these are real. Remember, when you take a Hermitian product in Cn and when you take an orthonormal basis w1, w2, wn and you string them together, you are going to get a unitary matrix. Unitary matrix means u star u equal to u u star equal to identity. So this is a theorem, the real case and the Hermitian case. The proofs are identical and uh, we will prove it for the Hermitian case and the proof of the real case is simpler. In fact, it's, uh, with, we can rewrite it with cosmetic changes and it's simpler in fact because you don't have to, you don't have to put the bars. So first let us separate off a simple lemma. The eigenvalues of a real symmetric matrix are real numbers. The eigenvalues of a Hermitian matrix are real numbers. But remember, if the matrix is a complex, Hermitian matrix is a complex matrix. The eigenvalue is real, but the eigenvector will still be complex. In the early, in the first, in the first part, the matrix is real, the eigenvalue is real, therefore the eigenvector will be real. In the second part, the matrix is complex, the eigenvalue is real, but the eigenvector will be complex. So let us consider the first case. Let us consider the first case. Uh, a is a real symmetric matrix and lambda is a root of its characteristic polynomial. Now, as such, I don't know that this root is real. 
So I have to assume that this root is complex. So I begin by assuming that the root is complex. And so I, and after all, uh, the matrix is a real matrix, but after all, every real number is also a complex number. So I regard A as N cross N complex matrix, for example, and the eigenvalue is complex, and I find the eigenvector V. So we can find the vector V in CN such that AV equal to lambda V. The only thing is that this vector has complex entries. We have done one example of a two by two matrix whose entries are real and whose eigenvalues were one plus minus two I remember. And we found an eigenvector which is complex. That's possible. Matrix is real, but the eigenvalue is complex. So the eigenvector will be complex. So we have AV equal to lambda V. Now let us multiply by V star. So V star AV, right hand side will be lambda times V star V. What is V star V? Suppose if V is, suppose if the vector V is A1, A2, AN as a written as a column, as a column vector of CN, then V star V will be summation J from 1 to N mod AJ squared. Now, what is V star V? V star V is a one cross one matrix. What is the star of a one cross one matrix? If I take a one cross one matrix consisting of a sim single complex number Z, what is a star? Star means first you have to complex conjugate and take the transpose. So since it's a one cross one matrix, taking the transpose won't make any difference, but as a complex conjugate has to be taken. So V star AV star is simply V star AV bar. But what is V star A V star? What is what is the what is B C star? It will be C star V star. So V star A V star will be V star A star V star star. V star star is V. And A star is A, remember? A star is A transpose, but uh, but A uh, because A is real, because A was real, matrix A was real, so there's no need to take the complex conjugate, only the only the transpose, but A was real symmetric. So A transpose is A. So V star A V star is again V star A V, but V star A V star is V star A V bar. So V star A V bar equal to V star A V star, which means that, that this number must be a real number. V star A V must be a real number. But what was, but uh, so the right hand side, so the, so the right hand, so, so now let us look at this equation one. In this equation one, we have realized that V star A V on the left hand side is a real number. It's, it, it is its own it is its own complex conjugate. Therefore, lambda times summation J from one to n is a real number. But the summation J from one to n mod A J squared is a positive real number. Therefore, lambda must be a real number. So we have proved that the eigenvalue with the root of the characteristic polynomial, which a priori was complex, has now established to be a real number has been established that it's a real number proof of the second one is exactly similar the proof goes runs through the same it is the same uh, sequence of steps and i leave the proof of two as an exercise you simply have to imitate the proof of one for uh, practically uh, and there are very 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 minor cosmetic changes the next lemma Again, there is a real case and there is a complex case. Let us look at them. Let A be a real symmetric n cross n matrix. Lambda and mu are distinct eigenvalues of A. They are distinct eigenvalues of A with eigenvectors V and W. Then V is orthogonal to W. In other words, eigenvectors correspond to distinct eigenvalues are orthogonal. But for what kind of matrices? Real symmetric matrices. The complex case. A is a n cross n Hermitian matrix. Lambda and mu are distinct eigenvalues of A with eigenvectors V, W in C, N. Then V orthogonal to W with respect to the in, uh, Hermitian product. In other words, eigenvalues of a Hermitian matrix correspond eigenvectors excuse me eigenvectors corresponding to distinct eigenvalues are orthogonal for hermitian matrices so let's go to the proof the proof is similar for the real and complex case let us do the complex case okay 
So lambda and mu are eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvectors are v and w. av equal to lambda v, aw equal to mu w. Left multiply the first equation by w star, left multiply the second equation by v star. w star av equal to lambda w star v, v star aw equal to mu times v star w. Apply star to the second equation. Apply star to the second equation. What do you get? V star aw star, v star aw star is going to be what? Mu times w star v. Because v star w star is w star v. Okay. And so, but the left hand side is what? When you apply, what is the left hand side? W star A star V star star is mu times W star V. But A star is her, but A star is A because A is a Hermitian matrix and V star star is V. So W star A V will be mu times W star V. So we started with the second equation, manipulated it, and we got that. W star A V equal to mu times W star V. Now what about the first equation? The first equation says W star A V equal to lambda W star V. Right? So now take the difference. Take the difference. Lambda minus mu of W star V is 0. And lambda and mu are distinct eigenvalues, remember? So w star v is 0. Therefore, v and w must be orthogonal. And the proof is complete. So we have proved that eigenvectors corresponding to distinct eigenvalues are orthogonal. Now let us come to the proof of the spectral theorem. What is the proof of the spectral theorem? A real symmetric matrix has an orthonormal basis consisting of eigenvectors and excuse me the spectral theorem says that a real symmetric matrix has an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors a hermitian matrix has an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors. Your orthonormality in the real case will be with respect to the inner product in Rn. Orthonormality in the complex case with, uh, will be with respect to the Hermitian product in Cn. Correct? So A is a n cross n. We are going to prove the spectral theorem for the complex case. And we leave out the real case for you, which is easier and follows on the complex case with cosmetic changes. A is an n cross n Hermitian matrix. Lambda 1 is an eigenvalue of A and V1 is its eigenvector. So, and I'm going to assume, I'm going to divide the eigenvector is non zero, remember? So, I'm going to divide the eigenvector by its length and I'm going to work with a unit eigenvector. So, V1 is a unit vector which is an eigenvector. Now, I can use the Gram Schmidt's process and I can complete it to an orthonormal basis. First of all, I can start with V1 and complete it to a basis, complete it to a basis and subject it to orth Gram Schmidt's process. I'll get an orthonormal basis. So I got an orthonormal basis V1 W2 dot 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 Wn, orthonormal basis. That is, start with any C basis and apply Gram Schmidt. Now, when I take an orthonormal system and when I string them together, I get a unitary matrix. I get a unitary matrix. Call this unitary matrix Q. Unitary means Q star Q equal to Q Q star equal to identity. So, take this unitary matrix. Let us calculate AQ. What is AQ? AQ is AV1, AW2, AW3, AWN. How do I check this? One way to check two matrices are equal means they check them column wise. Apply even cap to both sides. Operate post multiply by even cap. See what happens. Post multiply by E2 cap. See what happens. So check this. Check this. 
सो ए ए क्यू इज ए वी वन ए डब्ल्यू टू डा डा ए डब्ल्यू एन चेक कॉलम वाइज बट वॉट इज ए वी वन लैमडा वन वी वन ए डब्ल्यू टू ए डब्ल्यू थ्री आई डोंट नो वॉट दे आर बिकॉज आई डोंट नो वॉट इज डब्ल्यू टू डब्ल्यू थ्री डब्ल्यू एन आई ओनली नो वी वन आई नो वी वन इज एन आई कैन वैल्यू सॉरी इज एन आई कैन वेक्टर विद आई कैन वैल्यू लैमडा वन सो वी गॉट दिस इक्वेशन Now let us calculate Q star A Q. What is Q star A Q? Q star A Q applied to even cap will be Q star A, the first column of Q. First column of Q is V one, and A V one is lambda one V one. Lambda one comes out. It will be Q star V one. So lambda one times. But what is V one again? V one is the first column of Q. Remember. So it's Q even cap. So lambda one times Q star Q even, but Q is a unitary matrix, so Q star Q is identity. So it is simply lambda one even cap. So what is the first column of Q star A Q? The first column of Q star A Q is lambda one even cap. So how does Q star A Q look like? Q star A Q looks like lambda one followed by a string of zeros in the first column. A bunch of question marks in the first row, and an n minus one by n minus one matrix B. Now, what can you say about Q star A Q? Q star A Q is a Hermitian matrix, so it is going to be it, take its star. Q star A Q star will be Q star A star Q star star, but A star is A, Q star star is Q. So Q star A Q star is again Q star A Q. So Q star A Q, the left hand side is Hermitian. So the R H S must also be Hermitian. But what will happen if you take the R H S? You must take its transpose and complex conjugate, which means that all the question marks must be zeros. That's the first requirement. Lambda one is a real number. Remember, lambda was an eigenvalue, and then B will become B star. If you take the star of this, I, uh, you take the star of this. The you will get the zeros. The zero. The question marks will get replaced by zeros, and the zeros will get replaced by the question marks. Lambda one is real, so real number bar is real, the same real number, and B will become B star, and so and left hand side is, and and this is suppose and and since this is a Hermitian matrix, after taking the star, I'm I'm supposed to get the same thing. The matrix is its own adjoint. So what the, what does that force you? That forces all the question marks to become zero, and B star must be B. So what does this equation tell you? So this Q star A Q must be what? Q star A Q must be lambda one underneath that could be zero, and to the right of lambda one must be zero, and this B and this B is a n minus one by n minus one matrix, and B star must be B. So this B is a n minus one cross n minus one Hermitian matrix. Now it is very clear how to proceed. We must do an induction. Clearly, we are now ready for an inductive argument. The theorem is true for one cross one matrices. The spectral theorem is completely trivial for one cross one matrices. Let us assume that the spectral theorem is true for n minus one by n minus one cross n minus one Hermitian matrices. And let us prove it for n cross n. So the theorem. So we can assume that the spectral theorem has been established for B, because B is Hermitian and n minus one cross n minus one. Okay. So let lambda two. So since B is Hermitian, let us let us list its eigenvalues lambda two lambda lambda two da 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 lambda n. Let us list its eigenvectors u two u u three u n. I can. They are orthonormal, forming an orthonormal family. It has an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors in C n minus one, the induction hypothesis, right? So now, what does it mean to say that u two is an eigenvector? B u two will be lambda two u two, etc. Now, what I do to u two is I put a zero in front. What I do to u n, I put a zero in front. This u two u three are orthonormal in C n minus one. So I put a zero in front of them, and then I get an orthonormal system in C n. Okay, so I got an orthonormal system in C n, and Q is a unitary matrix. When I take when I take two two vectors are perpendicular, 
if two vectors are perpendicular if two vectors alpha and beta are perpendicular and q is a unitary matrix then q alpha q beta will also be perpendicular why check it q beta star q alpha beta star q star q alpha but q star q is identity and i'm left with beta star alpha beta star alpha is zero because alpha and beta are orthogonal so if two vectors are orthogonal and q is unitary q alpha and q beta are also orthogonal so these are orthonormal vectors in cn and you can check that after applying q they will remain orthonormal please check that the that the vectors in list 1 are orthonormal now let us check that the vectors in list 1 are eigen vectors of a let us check that the vectors in list 1 are eigen vectors how do i check it's an eigen vector apply a to it a q apply to 0 u g a q apply to 0 u g now in front of a i'm going to put a q q star no harm because q q star is identity so q star a q is our special matrix lambda 1 0 0 b remember so i'm left with this q and i'm left with lambda 1 0 0 b and i'm having this u 0 uj i'm having this 0 uj but that that is going to be what q applied to you can do a block multiplication if you like or you can check it directly you can directly see that this product lambda 1 0 0 b applied to 0 uj is simply 0 buj but buj is lambda j uj lambda j comes out you get q times 0 uj so q applied to 0 uj is again an is an eigen vector so that so the elements in list 1 are are orthonormal first and they are eigen vectors but remember we have one more eigen vector right to the first step remember the first column v1 the first column of q was also an eigen vector but what is the first column of v1 first column of v1 is q e1 cap is also an eigen vector so now we had the list we had the list 1 and i'm going to enlarge the list 1 by throwing in a q e1 cap and i got list 2 now what can you say about 0 u2 0 u3 what can you say about 0 u2 and e1 cap obviously they are orthogonal 0 u2 is orthogonal to e1 cap so q applied to 0 u2 is orthogonal to q applied to e1 cap so enlarging the list it the list the enlarged list is also orthonormal now now this is an orthonormal set system of n vectors so it's an orthonormal basis this list 2 is an orthonormal basis of cn and list 2 is an is a, is a complete v1 is an eigen vector of a and we are just check that the remaining ones are also eigen vectors of a and so list list 2 furnishes an orthonormal basis of eigen vectors of a as claimed the proof of the spectral theorem is now complete i think this is a good place to stop this lecture and take up the next one in the next capsule